I'm flying these motors right now, the RCX H2205 2633KV. And I have to say, if you haven't tried one of these higher KV motors that are starting to come out on the market in the range of about 2500 to 2700 KV, I think you should give it a go. Uh, it requires a little bit of an adaptation in your thinking in that you're not going to be able to run some of the more aggressive props but I think you might be pleasantly surprised with what these motors will do with a slightly less aggressive prop and just spin the dickens out of it. Uh, they, they, I think that this is giving a pretty good balance of, of efficiency and speed. I haven't done any rigorous tests to test that, but there you go. Uh, you know, a lot of us fly 2204 and 2205 size motors in the, in the range of about 2300 kV. And, and that used to be sort of the top end of what you could expect. And for whatever reason, nowadays, uh, we see some of these higher KV motors coming out. And, uh, and I definitely think they're worth a look. Uh, a 2205, 2204, 2300 KV motor can spin basically any 5-inch prop that you want. But on many of these 5-inch props, it's actually going to be under-propped and not going to be making the most of itself. So in order to get the most out of a 2300 kV motor, you start going to three blade props, three blade bull nose, and then you, you get some efficiency losses because bull nose aren't very efficient. You get the fragility of tri, tri blades and the expense of tri blades. And uh, I, I went to it this motor because I really, really wanted to try to find a motor that could perform well on a two blade prop. So I didn't have to deal with the expense and the fragility of three blades. I'm still judging whether that was the right decision. I'm not ready to give a verdict, but I, d I am encouraged by the results I'm getting. And I think if you look at what manufacturers are putting out, many of the top end motors now, uh, the, the schizo motors from Lumineer are 2,500 kV. There's this new crop of higher kV motors, and I don't think it's just marketing nonsense. I think that they're definitely worth a look. There will be some props that you can't run on these motors because they lack torque, uh, but I think with the right prop, these motors are a really good choice. And, and any of these motors in the higher, don't just assume that 2204, 2205, 2300 kV is what you should get. That's if you're, if you're a beginner doing your first build, that won't be a bad choice because you could fly any prop, you, any five inch prop you want on those motors and, and probably find something you like. But if you want to start trying to push the edge and try to find better times, you owe it to yourself to at least give a try on one of these higher kV motors. So with that all being said, my favorite prop to run and the prop I bought these motors to try to run is the King Kong 5040, and I'll get back to that. But I broke my King Kong 5040s and didn't have any spares. And while I've been waiting for them to come in the mail, I have borrowed a bunch of other props from my friends and have, you know, a set of this, a set of that. And as I break them, I just put the next one on. So I've had a lot of opportunity to try a whole bunch of different props on these motors, and I'm going to give you a quick rundown. The first one I tried was the GemFan 5040, and the GemFan 5040 uh, was a complete no-go. Uh, somewhere over, above about 50 or 60 percent throttle, you could hear them deflecting. So they're too soft. They just they're a complete no-go on this high KV motor. It was they 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 flew okay right up to the point where you could just hear them fluttering in the wind, and then you're like, well, clearly this isn't optimal. Okay, so they're they're just a no-go. I also flew on the Dow 5040. Now, the Dow 5040 props, or the Dow props in general, they're known as indestructible props. And I feel like that's a little bit uh, too much of a good thing, if you will. The problem is that these props, number one, they are heavy. If you compare them to the King Kongs, they are similarly indestructible, sort of, in that they're not like the HQ props, which just disintegrate if you look at them funny. But the Dow props are heavier than the King Kong props. And what that means is that with the tiniest little nick, they get out of balance and they become unflyable. Like, it's not like the copter falls out of the air, but there's so much vibration that the minute you throttle up, the camera just starts going crazy and you just don't want to fly like that. So they're very sensitive to being out of balance. Uh, and the other thing is that the Dow props, uh, you, can, you can bend one in a crash and it's not obvious that it's bent. You have to, I've taken to turning the props and looking at where the prop lines up on the standoff 
and just sort of put my finger where it lines up so I can turn the prop and see if one of the blades is like an eighth of an inch low. So I can, now the good news is you can bend it back up and you can get back in the air and be fine. But it's kind of hard to tell if the prop is damaged to the point where it's going to be an issue until you take off and then you get the vibrations. The other problem about these dowel props, specifically relating to these motors, the first day I flew these dowel props, I bent two motor shafts or bells. I don't know what. I, I'm not sure whether it was the shaft or the bell. But basically, you would turn the motor and you could see the bell going up and down and up and down and up and down. And I think that's because these props are so tough that in a crash, they damage the motor. Now, if I had to, the RCX motors are not the most durable motors. They're, they're a little bit light and a little bit flimsy. Uh, but ever since I stopped running the Dow props, I haven't had that problem again. So I wouldn't recommend running these props on these motors uh, it, because they I think they're too heavy for the motors and they uh, they tend to break the motor in a crash. Also, I'm just not a huge fan of Dow props overall for the reasons I gave because it's hard to tell when they're broken and they get out of balance. If you compare them to the King Kongs, the King Kongs are not as tight tough as the dowel props but i think that's a good thing because with the king kongs if you get a little nick in the tip of the blade you can keep flying and they're light enough that it's not so out of balance that you can't fly i've flown with some pretty banged up props and the the, the hd video is still smooth as glass but then if you get in a serious crash they do break which i think helps the motors a little bit i'd rather break a prop than bend a motor shaft so I feel like the, the King Kong props are just the perfect balance of toughness, but not so tough that they break something else. They'll take the hit if they need to. Um, so there you go. Uh, I have flown with the HQ 5x45 Bullnose. This prop is, in my opinion, too heavy for the motor. Now, the good news is that it's not heavy like the Dow prop in that if it gets into a crash, it will not break the motor because it's an HQ prop. It will definitely break first, okay? HQ props are the first to break. They will not break your motors. But uh, I was doing some, um, some flips where I would do a half flip, freeze, half flip, freeze, you know, and turn back over again. And so there were rapid, rapid stick movements and rapid motor movements spinning up and spinning down. And I actually had a desync. And I've never had a desync before, ever. So I feel like these props are too heavy and too aggressive for these motors. Maybe I could fix that by adjusting the timing on the motors. But but there's so many other options out there. And these square tip props, they they're so inefficient. This it's over propped for this motor. Amp draw was high throughout the throttle range, basically, uh, except at just the lowest of cruises. So this is not a good fit for this motor in terms of uh, how much torque it requires and also in terms of uh you know the d sync issues so i don't think that was a good choice i flew the hq 5040s <clears throat> nothing to say about these props really they were fine i don't think i noticed a significant difference between the hq 5040s and the king kong 5040s and there's people out there, people whose opinion I respect, who tell me that the the shape of the HQ40, this sort of blade shape versus this sort of curved airfoil shape, there are people tell me that this is a much more efficient shape. And maybe they're right. But in the air, I don't notice a significant difference. Uh, this is a fine prop to run. It's a decent performance. Uh, but uh, again, as fragile as HQ props are and as expensive as they are, I just can't, aff I can't afford to spend six or eight dollars every time I crash, you know? Okay, these are, what are they? Two forty nine for, please tell me that's for a pair. Please tell me that's for a pair. It is. So it's not quite two dollars each, but it's so expensive. Every time you crash, you break three, three or four props. It's no good. You can't do it. I was lent a set of five by four by three props. And I think so far, this is the single best performing prop I've had on this motor. It was not over propped. I got smooth thrust response throughout the entire throttle range. Uh, so uh, at the top end, I didn't find that it was over propped at the top end and that the it just sort of bogged down. Uh, whereas if we compare it, oh, I left one off the list. Uh, TJ5045, hold on. I left this one off the list. Sorry about that. We go. This is another one I flew. So I also flew these props, the Dow TJ5045. And uh, despite my bad experience with the 5040 Dows, 
I've had decent experience with these so far. I don't know if there's something about the tri-blade design that means that they they bend sooner and they don't break the motors as much, or maybe I just didn't crash as much that day. But for these, I feel I feel like these are a very good all-around prop, and especially if you fly uh, if you, especially if you fly twenty three hundred kV motors, they're gonna they would be a really good fit and really worth your time. Uh, they're as you can see, they're much cheaper than the HQ five by four by three. But interestingly, on these props, once I got to the upper end of the throttle range, current draw went through the roof, and I didn't feel like I got that much more thrust. So these were okay for sort of mid to low throttle, uh, you know, proximity work through the trees, right? But if you're going to do acro style full throttle punch outs, these would not be a good choice for these motors. They, they're too much prop for these motors. Uh, okay. But these, these, these are, I think, really in the sweet spot for these motors. They make a ton of thrust. And you can go all the way up the throttle range without bogging the motors down much. And just very responsive. Uh, these ones are slightly less responsive uh, because they're heavier. So it's a little harder to make fine adjustments in your altitude and, and so forth. Whereas these ones, smooth, responsive, track great, amazing thrust. And if only they were not so fragile and expensive, I would run them every day. But again, just can't afford to uh, to spend... Uh, what is a dollar seventy something dollar seventy I think that was my math <laughs> a dollar I can't afford to spend that you know that much times three or four every time I crash it's just just can't do it can't do it so uh, there you go there's a quick rundown of all the props I've used uh, on these motors in the last couple weeks and uh, my recommendations if you have all the money in the world and if you don't mind. The, the copter falling into the dirt every time you look at a tree branch funny, this is the prop that I would recommend, okay? But here's the thing. If you may be the fastest one on the track, but if you mess up a turn and you nick a, a branch and you're in the dirt, you're not going to win the race. Whereas a prop like this, you will you will continue flying, okay? And a prop like this, like likewise, you probably will continue flying. So that's a tough call. Uh, depends on how good of a pilot you are, I suppose. This is the prop that I still like the best. It is not the highest performing prop, right? This prop probably makes more thrust because it has a different uh, blade shape. But at 25 cents a pop, this is just the best prop for day-to-day for -day flying. Maybe for a race I would put this prop on, but I still like this one the best. And I got 60 of them coming in the mail, and any day now they'll be here, and I'll get back to, to doing what I, what I want to do. Uh, so there you go. There's a rundown of the props I've tried on this this uh, motor. Hope you liked it. Hope it was informative. If you have any suggestions for other props, uh, give, put them in the comments. Uh, and as always, happy flying.